Hello and welcome. My name is Meepalus and this is Literally Cryptic. And today I am going to be talking about another Ad Astro Comics republication and that is War in the Neighborhood by Seth to Topuchin. It was amazing. It was amazing, seriously. Um, I gave it five out of five stars because not only did I feel like it was really technically well done um, with all of the writing, the art, the paneling, the even the speech bubbles, all that was really top notch for me, but also because I really felt like it expanded my worldview and taught me things and showed me things and did things in a way that I wasn't expecting um, and it definitely was not your kind of run-of-the-mill comic book, which is all that it takes to get a 5 out of 5 star with me. A little bit of objective, a little bit of personal. So what is this book though actually about? Before I continue fangirling over it, this book is about Seth's life as he was living in his neighborhood, how he became radicalized when he saw the mistreatment of some people in his neighborhood and watched them resist and decided to join in. He eventually joins a squat um, and then kind of his interactions with his neighbors, his friends, the ways um, as he uh, <clears throat> and kind of just a documentation of their time there. Um, the ups and downs, when the police came in to try and evict them several times, how different what times that they resisted different things until ultimately um, he and the squad go separate ways. Um, Seth himself is uh, points out in the beginning, which I did start a long time ago because I read like 99% of this book in a rush, then started reading Headscars and Hymens, and then came back to this book to read the last part of it. Um, so it's been a little bit of a while, um, but yeah, so at the beginning he does open with the fact that there are going to be other people's opinions about what happened, um, so, and he does kind of combine and different actual people into a single, um, kind of a, a fictional person, but, so it's not as if it's necessarily a 100% factual uh, account of what happened. That said, uh, this definitely feels like one of those times in which fiction tells a very strong truth. Um, and so even if you don't take it necessarily on the factual level, I think there's a lot of things that you can take out of this book. And there's a lot of ways in which you can just purely enjoy this. Um, it's a really, really gosh darn just enjoyable read because of how, uh, the, how excellent Seth's storytelling is. Um, the, this is a collection of short stories, though basically all, you know, following into the ar grand arc of his time as a squatter and a resistor. He, um, but it kind of highlights different sex, the different times where things were more in conflict, I guess, either from within their own group or when the outside try trying to come in. And a lot of really great stories get told. A lot of really interesting characters are shown and the art I found to be really, really exciting in a lot of ways. Um, the art does vary a bit from story to story uh, going, but it is exclusively black and white some of the stories include more shading, some of them are more austere. The art style is very rough, but, and not super realistic, but not necessarily, like, I'm looking at it now, it's like, it feels pretty realistic though, but simple. It's not like hugely caricatured. Um, although there is some poetic, imagery that goes on. Like, much like in Mouse, um, a lot of the police officers 
in this book when they're like attacking them or trying to remove them from their homes are represent and those ways in which the law was kind of trying to remove them from their livelihoods and put them out on the street um, they are represented by skulls um, they don't actually have faces and then there's also some times in which um, things that he metaphors that he's drawing he illustrates a lot of his text bubbles were text was also laid out in a somewhat poetic fashion taking on different shapes and contours or integrating with different pieces of the set i guess you could say um it wasn't which made it not necessarily an easy read um this is certainly not the first comic book i would necessarily recommend to someone who hadn't really read a lot of comic books before it might be very difficult for them to follow but it doesn't feel like it was difficult to follow because the person didn't know what they were doing um they did push the creative limits a little bit but it still felt like they were um doing so in a way that furthered the story rather than um held it held it back because some of these parts you do want to go through slow and you want to understand everything that's going on and there's a lot going on so sometimes you just need to slow it down so I guess that was a way that Seth could kind of pace the reader through different things and that'd be something to keep in mind um, for future reviews and you know anyone writing stuff is how to pace the reader through the ways that you integrate the text with other stuff but the visual poetry, I guess, was one of the really big things I took away from it artistically because it just, it doesn't, it's definitely not telling the story straight. Um, not telling the story in the, in the kind of minimalist style that, say, Chester Brown would bring to this story. It's not Chester Brown. It's kind of like the antithesis, except still not overly intricate. Um, but yeah, very poetic. It just, yeah, that's all I can say is it felt poetic. Um, digging deeper into the story itself. Um, another thing that, the other thing that really stood out to me um, as being true about these stories was the ways in which racism and sexism were like front and center even in the people who were resisting the um, resisting the police squatting, some of these people were like total douchebags um, and stuff. Um, and uh, I guess perhaps that's another reason that such as not want to necessarily tell the factual truth because as people who write uh, actual like actually like put un, um, uncomplimentary views of their acquaintances into comic books can tell you that can be like Russian roulette <laughs> so that might have been a big reason that he didn't do it I don't know so a couple of them are dead by the time that this book finished so Maybe that wasn't such an issue, or maybe it seemed disrespectful. But yeah, uh, it felt really great. Um, though It was really nice, though, to have someone who was willing to tell those things, because there's a lot of times that people, either through naivete or dishonesty, want to pretend that the resistance as it is, um, it does not have those problems. Or that, you know, pe um, people should just ignore racism and sexism until we solve all their problems. Yeah, no. So it just, it was kind of, it was a pretty cutting indictment though. I guess the third thing that I found very, very educational about this book was how it talked about gentrification. Um, and you really got to see the results of gentrification, the results of the rising home prices, um, kind of, yeah, it's definitely an issue I've been aware of for a long time and obviously is something that I could perpetuate um, because of my different privileges um, and something I want to avoid perpetuating, 
Uh, this certainly didn't give me like a cookie cutter answer, but I do feel like I understand the problems more and I've more in taken in more of the critiques of gentrification because it's still, it's a siren's call, like the whole, th oh, we'll improve things. Well, no, that's, that's not the answer. So like, comment, subscribe, and resist fascism. Let's all say it together now. Resist fascism. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13, also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.